Good morning, morning pain report. I'm feeling okay, except I had an early wake up. So um, I just learned, just learned recently that um, a symptom of fibromyalgia is that um, uh, there's insomnia and and then hypersomnia during the day. So uh, awake at night and asleep during the day. So, wow, I didn't know that. <laughs> Guess who's been waking up? between 4 and 4.30 a.m. their entire lives, well, except for times when I'm too exhausted, right, to at all wake up. <laughs> but when I'm not exhausted, my brain is like, okay, let's start the day now, 4.30 a.m., like a clock or something. Come on, really? <sighs> In my undergraduate studies, I took a course, I took many courses in neuropsychology because that's the kind of university it was. And I learned a little bit about circadian rhythms. And at that time I was like, oh, I'm just one of those fast people who has a circadian rhythm that's just a little bit under 24 hours. And that's why I wake up at 4.30 a.m. every day. Um, I still think that that might be part of it. I might just be one of those little bit fast people. Every cycle, every, every rhythm is fast for me, um, unless I'm exhausted, which is like the last 10, <laughs> that's 10 to 15 years, I've been like utterly, completely exhausted. Um, but um, yeah, even when I had um, uh, a hormonal cycle that I could see and count on, it was very fast, um, like 21 days or 20 days like come on really <laughs> who needs that <laughs> all right so I'm doing very well this morning and I'm thinking about attachment and I'm thinking about um the four noble truths um and I'll have to go back and retitle yesterday's video because it was part two right well today's part three um so suffering happens because we're attached and attachment happens because that's how we're built and so what's the real cause we have to go another step so step three it's our grasping our grasping our our need for permanence and stability and everything to stay the same unless it's terrible and we want it to change but we have uh, a very innate need as human beings as mammals even when you look at the neurochemistry to go towards what is pleasurable and to avoid what is painful and so it is our basic nature to try in any way we we can to keep hold tight of what makes us feel good and our feelings are like our barometer or our indicator of how we're doing and Somehow in the last hundred years, we have entirely as a society, as a group of societies, I should say, we have somehow managed to classify some feelings as valid and some feelings as invalid. But that is just nonsense because all feelings are exactly the same. They're neurochemical electrophysiological events happening in our brains and then the other organs out of our body in response to everything that's outside of our skin and everything that's inside of our skin too <laughs> so there's no one feeling that's better or worse than another actually they are simply indicators so it's just like there's no temperature that's better or worse than another, right? You think about temperature, um, and let's think about a plants, all right? So no human feelings or mammalian love that we could actually infer there. Totally alien to us, plants, 
right? And the plant feels, senses the temperature. And it isn't one of its essential things that it needs, like sunlight and water, but it's there. It's part of the situation. And sometimes the temperature is such that the plant's chemical processes can happen quickly, and so they grow a lot. And sometimes the temperature is not ideal for growth, and the plant grows more slowly. And this is with the same amount of light and water, right? So our feelings are exactly the same. They are there to tell us what the state of things are and what is possible. And so I, having learned to neglect myself very early in life and have having really no actual finesse about feelings until adulthood, like really it was all just like, good feelings, bad feelings, <laughs> really no gray, right? Um, it took me a while to learn to even notice. So I have to take time still. It's like, it's not, it doesn't come easily, but that's okay. Some people process feelings a little bit more slowly than others. And again, that's like the temperature. It's just the way it is. And so once you know how you are, the correct reaction to yourself is to take care of yourself. Real care for your real, actual self. How you are. Right? And that's what I'm trying to do right now. I am trying to take care of my actual physical needs as they are instead of staying in my mind and disconnected from my body. And in my mind, everything's possible. So trying to remain neutral and remain balanced in my feelings and understand what I need for real is the most important thing that I need to be doing. And my grasping at this PhD, which is my current problem, right? <laughs> my wanting it because I feel like I've already done all the work and I deserve it and it's mine and I paid for it and all of these things, <laughs> right? All of these ideas, it's the grasping while not being able that is the most painful thing right now, right? Ah. <sighs> Gradually, I'll be able to let it go because I have had the experience, uh, especially in the last six months or so, that whenever I'm like especially upset that I am letting go, I go on YouTube. <laughs> Thank you, YouTube. <laughs> Thank you, YouTubers. And I realize that every great thought that I have is actually completely plumbed to the depths, like all the other scholars have done all the work already, and I have absolutely nothing new to say. <laughs> and that is freeing, because then I can just think my way through things here on these little YouTube videos and not have to worry about all the song and dance that comes with the PhD where I have to like put things into fancy words and then defend it in a combative, competitive environment, which is just not me. I don't want to do that. I really don't. Ew. All right. Wow, that was another long one. <laughs> Thanks for listening.